Just for the record, the first 100 Days in Office, a series that we present to you featuring all 13 members of the House of Assembly. Just for your knowledge, all 13 have been invited. If you don't see in our honorable minister, that simply means that they did not accept the invitation. Today, I'm joined by the 8th District Representative, the Honorable Marlon A. Penn. Honorable Penn, welcome back to our platform and thank you for your time. Thank you, Ryan. It was a pleasure to be here with you and to wait for me. All right. Now, the last time you sat in this fashion, in sure. this uh, identical seat, you were asking the people of the 8th District yeah. to re-elect you. Yes. They have done that. You are now serving your fourth term as an elected official representing that particular district. Yeah. I want you to recap in a nutshell for me and for the people what the first 100 days of office in this fourth term has been. The first 100 days, around the first 100 days have been extremely challenging um, as it relates to just getting things moving. Um, we've been mm -hmm. at a very a stalemate as it relates to a lot of the infrastructural things that need to happen within the country. We've seen recently where the teachers have striked our concerns of maintenance issues and other issues the teachers have expressed in our districts around the territory. A lot of the public schools have experienced severe challenges in terms of maintenance and getting things going. And that's even despite us um, getting monies in place to really address many of those issues in the last SAP in July. We are still unable to get the, the machine moving to get things going in terms of government. We see the infrastructural issues which I've expressed. We just had a house, house of house assembly session where questions were asked, particularly about the water, road, um, and sewage infrastructure throughout this territory. And the challenges exist. Um, it's not an issue of financing, as you see the monies are there to execute those projects. It's just a matter of know-how and ability to get things executed. And that's been plaguing this administration um, from the last administration and even now leading into the first 100 days. We see their inability to get things moving and get things going. Um, for me, um, in my district, I'm focused on how can I mobilize as much as I can the resources and marshal resources on the ground to get things moving and, and bring some sort of relief to the people of that community. Um, those are challenges that we've been working on to get addressed. Um, over the last five years, it's been very difficult getting things moving. And I think the reality is that we have to educate persons on how the process will work. Even though you're an elected member of a district, um, the funding is done through the House of Assembly and is executed by the ministry and the minister um, in power. And if the minister doesn't see it fit to execute projects, particularly in, in your district, it doesn't get executed. Um, the district rep has no power or monies or funds available to execute those projects. So that's why you've seen me advocate um, very vigorously um, in the House of Assembly, particularly for funding to address the road issues in our community, to address the water infrastructure in our community, to address the issues with sewage in our community. We found out in the last house sitting that the monies that they said was not available, $5.5 million of that money was made available to the, the government of the Virgin Islands since 2019 to be able to address the issues of sewage within my community. And up to date, not one penny was spent on sewage in my community. So we have some challenges in this government inability to execute, to mobilize and get things moving, but we're mobilizing our, our community. We're marshalling the strength of the people of the community where we can assist as much as we can in terms of clean up the clean up in a community to get persons who have need some support, whether through the private sector or so forth. We're trying to help as much as we can. But the reality is that government's resources have to be used wisely and used for the benefit of the people of those communities and in fact the wider territory. When you speak of, of resources and helping, uh, part of being an elected official, of course, uh, from the public perception is essentially helping yeah. the people. And one of the aspects that has always been beneficial to helping persons would be uh, district representatives having the ability and access to funding yeah. to help persons. And yeah. I want to touch there because it was under your leadership as the former Minister for Health yeah. that the social assistance grant uh, was uh, placed under the Social Development mm -hmm. Department, of course, obviously under the CAI recommendations, it was removed and placed under their yeah. um, you know, uh, leadership. You were instrumental in leading that. As it is now, is it being effectively used? I would say no, Ron. I, I know that the social development based on the constraints that they have are trying their best. And that's why when I took office, and I want to make it very clear that that was based on a recommendation through the COI and the and government at the time, the unity government at the time, decided that they were going to move forward with that recommendation. We saw the, the, the commission inquiry report. We saw the reports from the Auditor General. We saw the challenges in terms of how those funds were being misused and mismanaged. And we need to ensure that we have a transparent system in place to ensure that persons who need help are able to get help in an open and transparent way without the bureaucracy or the dependent on any one individual to give them that level of assistance. So we, we embarked when I was minister on a reform of the social 
um, social system and the social um, benefit systems within the territory. That report has been finished. It was tabled in the House of Assembly. It's only now left for the government of the day to implement the changes that are being recommended. It, what it recommends is that a more streamlined process and the Kodoka after the bureaucracy and red tape that comes with getting assistance while still keeping a level of accountability and transparency as part of the process, but you don't want to have persons who are in desperate need of assistance waiting over a month to six weeks for assistance when they need medical assistance or food vouchers to support themselves and their families or their rent is due and they have some challenges to pay their rent or even electricity bill um, to pay a bill. There needs to be a more quicker um, and more nimble process to assist persons in the, in the report addresses that issue and it's just a matter of implementation and then reformation um, but there needs to be more ways of which persons need to get support and then but those things have to be very transparent and open as you see where to avoid the abuse that we saw within the auditor general reports that revealed a myriad of abuse by some members in terms of the funds that were available to our disposal you mentioned medical you mentioned rent you mentioned food vouchers mm -hmm. when people call the honorable marlon pen for help are those some of the uh aspects that they're requesting yeah. help for? That's a lot of the things they're asking for. Some persons are having challenges um, getting um, a proper meal on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, they're farming here on their rent. Um, uh, many persons are still unemployed, they're balancing um, the whole issues with COVID, um, the hurricanes, um, just just medical bills. Sometimes, you know, when, when persons get sick, it's always a challenge, even those who might have uh, a decent job or, or have some good finances. Medical issues could really broke a family and, and really put a financial strain on families. So a lot of families are looking ways and finding ways to, to help buttress some of the, the, the hardship that they're experiencing right now. And we try our best through social development department to, to, to fill as many of those needs as possible. What would you like the people of the 8th District, and by extension, the territory, <clears throat> to understand about leadership in this particular day and age, given yeah. all that we've been through, the COI recommendations and their yeah. implementations, and now, of course, uh, that you sit while a, minister, a member, uh, you are on the opposition. What, what would you like them to understand about that dynamic? It's, it's different. It's not business as usual. Things are a lot more um, difficult to get done in terms of the process, but you need leadership that's nimble and adaptive. Uh, the leaders have to adapt to the current circumstances under which we find ourselves. Put the systems and processes in place to ensure that you get the project executed. And it seems to be a difficulty for the current government to be able to get things moving. It just takes forever to get anything moving. But they have to, leadership has a burden. Um, as leaders, you have to find ways and be innovative and be trans in, in, in a transparent BVI to make sure that you get things moving for the people. And it's not difficult. You see, I see in Turks and Caicos, my colleagues in Turks and Caicos, they went through a similar situation with the uh, uh, COI. They had their constitution suspended. But you're seeing where they're getting things done for their people because they were able to put systems in place to get things done. We have not gotten the same faith as Turks and Caicos, but we have to be able to be, um, in, we have to use ingenuity to get things done and get the project executed for the people. Nothing is moving around. And that's the unfortunate thing that people are suffering as a result. The road, I mean, people, the, the road is one of the biggest Achilles heels of many persons. I mean, you're not having proper road, you're not getting the level of support that you used to get. And then it's costing them more on the back end, because the more they have to pay in terms of repairs to the, the, the vehicles, the tires are getting, getting, um, getting, getting um, damaged, and, and different aspects, the suspension has been damaged because of the poor condition of the roads. We need to have a, a focused approach to fixing the roads, not just patching them, but fixing them once and for all so that it lasts a lot longer than it would um, ordinarily under the current circumstances. So, but it takes leadership, it takes um, thinking about how to really get things moving, um, but either way, we don't see that right. And the first 100 days, I'm not seeing where the headway is happening, or the breakthrough is happening in terms of really getting things moving. The economy is suffering, Ron. It's the first time I've seen in the time that I've been in politics that we had a summer period where there was no activity on the ground leading up to the festival areas. Now you have the cleanup happening, getting the, com the communities back up in shape. Um, at least the young guys who are out home for the summer would have some opportunities to make some money um, for the summer and, and, and really uh, help their family sometimes um, with that money that they've made. Nothing, nothing was happening. And we're going into Christmas season now and it seems to be a similar thing that is happening because of government inability to get opportunities moving on the ground for, for people. Stay tuned for more Just For The Record right after this. The wait is over! CCT Fire is here! Experience a 
ultra fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all new fire blazing super fast CCT Fire Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. You are uh, one of the members of the opposition. Sure. And in my observation, it, it sometimes yeah. comes yeah. across where because of where you sit, persons look at the other side or vice versa as um, the enemy. When yeah. in fact, um, all 13 members yeah. essentially should uh, holistically be working towards and together for the betterment of the uh, people. This is perhaps one of the first times in a long time we've had so many members uh, mm -hmm. on the opposition. Sure. The questions are being asked. In this particular first 100 days, the meetings of the House of Assembly have been very few. Mm -hmm. And when I say very few, in comparison to years gone by, you're asking the questions as a member of the opposition, are you getting the answers, one? And are you pleased with the meetings, House of Assembly yeah. meetings, and your ability to come in that form and ask your questions? First, I'm not pleased with the answers that we're getting as a house. Um, we, we typically would have had at least five or six meetings by the time now. Um, it's about been about five months. Typically, we'll have a meeting a month um, under normal circumstances. For and whatever, how many meetings have you had so We've far? had two. This is, okay. a, this is actually a second meeting. So my meeting. assumption and my actually, observation the third, is well, not... The, the original one was the swearing in, and then mm -hmm. this, is a, this is the third meeting, but it's actually two meetings of where we have business of the house. And, and the, the, the business of the house is all decided by the speaker and the premier army sets the agenda in terms of the business of the house and it'll just determine when we will have um, the sitting in consultation, um, premier consultation with the speaker. Uh, we, for whatever reason, we haven't had many sittings so far. Uh, I, I feel that the, the government has been very, um, um, uh, the word, I mean, I'm trying to find a, a kind word. Uh, I think they're very... Um, they're dodging a lot of the questions and not being direct in terms of the answers to the question. Uh, we're answering the questions, not particularly we want to embarrass the government. It's about putting information out to educate the public and where we are and try to find a medium in terms of how can we move forward. A lot of the things I've done for the last first 100 days is to really work with the ministers to try to address many of the issues that I have plagued in my community. And in fact, some of the issues are territory-wide issues that I believe that I have some expertise and some knowledge I could assist in terms of finding a solution on the way forward. Um, we haven't gotten much in the way of, of movement done, as I've said all year round. Um, and I don't know what, why Why is that? What is it? It's a, a matter of, of, of know-how or ability to move things forward. But we need to move things forward. And if there are ways where we as the opposition can assist the government to get things going for the better, best interest of the people of this territory, we're willing to do that. We've expressed that to the government, that we're not about just embarrassing you or trying to create a, um, uh, make it a, a grandstand, if you wish, if you may. But we're about what is best for the country moving forward and how can we work collaboratively to make those things work for the people of this territory. The road is all of our problems. And we need to figure out a way to get the roads done and get them done in, in a, in a cost-effective and, and in a more efficient way um, than how we've been doing them in the past. One of the things, Honorable Penn, that I've asked uh, some of your colleagues who sat down for this opportunity mm -hmm. is what whether they're a first time or returning legislator, what has been their uh, relationship, uh, professional relationship and working together with uh, whether it's members of the opposition or members on the government, what has your relationship been like with uh, some of these members um, holistically? I personally have no issue with any of the members. All of us, um, we get along, we're, we're friendly, but I find that we, we politicize too many of the things that are necessary to do for the people of our country. Um, I find that that when things are needed to be done, particularly in districts where we have non-government members representative, we sort of push the, the representative on the side and try to undermine and go around them to get some of these things done. I think that's un, that's unproductive. Um, and it also doesn't, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, that's creeping up in this particular administration that I'm, I'm going to speak about in the House of Assembly, that we need to nip it in the butt. You, you, politics, elections is over. The people elected 13 members to represent their interests. And all 13 of us need to work collaboratively for the best interests of all the people of these Virgin Islands. Whether I am part of the government, whether I'm of opposition, you need to respect me and my position as an elected member of this country and let us work together to address the issues within the my district and within every district of this country. And I think that is the message that needs to be sent to the Premier and his team. That way, we, we all are duly elected members. 
And we can show that level of respect for each duly elected member. You mentioned quite a number of issues, infrastructure, uh, sewage, water. Yeah. Uh, one of the matters of, of interest that I've seen you publicly speak about within the last uh, 100 days, particularly as it uh, drew near to the reopening of schools, has been education. Yes. You have uh, a number of schools, primary schools, yeah. in your district. Uh, what is your take on the progress in education, but not only that, but the infrastructure of the schools yeah. and the handling of that in your district? I'm very disappointed, Ron, particularly on the Willow Whitley Primary School issue. Um, I was there yesterday and I was there a few weeks prior. What is the issue with the Willow Whitley Primary School? There's just school? a myriad of issues. Um, and those issues were brought to the attention of the ministry way in advance. Uh, we had a July 1st, I think it was, we had the supplementary appropriation where we assigned monies to address the issues of the maintenance of school. And these issues were already highlighted. So you have issues where the playground equipment is inadequate. It's, it's actually a danger to the students. I went there yesterday and they were supposed to be closed down, but they're still playing. And then I asked the ministry to have them condemn until we could replace them. The, there was an issue of the restroom is, is really in, in bad shape. Um, and there needed to be more better maintenance. They even in paying the school run um, up, and, up, up until open day. Um, they, they were over the weekends in and off having a few people come and start to paint the schools um, on the exterior walls of the schools, which was not done. Um, the issue of the, 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 the AC equipment. One AC is working in the school after when I went to a private contractor in the last term to ensure that they got all the AC systems fixed. Um, on, on my strength and my support of that, that contractor, we said, look, I know, I know we don't have any funds right now to get this done. Can you support the school? And the contractor, without, without hesitation, said, look, I will support you and get these things up and running. They had them up and running. Now we only have one of those systems that are working because a private individual donated them to the school. But we got monies run. We had monies in the budget, in the supplementary appropriation to deal with the issues of maintenance within schools. But it continues. To, I don't know what happens to the money when it goes into this pool to do the maintenance, but it maintenance is not being done. Um, the, the just It's just an overall mess in terms of the infrastructure issues and maintenance issues at the Willow Whitley School. And you're seeing it at Joyce Samuels. It couldn't open this week. You're seeing it at all the other schools own the territory is having a similar challenge. We have a clear plan and a clear path to how we're going to deal with maintenance of the schools. Um, I'm willing to sit down with the CEO and the minister and say, look, let us set a plan. Um, we're going to the next budget cycle. These are the list of issues that we have at the Willowly Primary School. Let me work with you. Let's work together to organize a plan and a schedule of um, addressing the issues one by one to be able to bring some level of comfort to the students and the teachers who on a daily basis, this is their home. Um, they take care of our children, make sure they have a proper education. Sometimes they feed them, sometimes they do all type of things outside the scope of their job description. And they need to have a comfortable and, 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 and comfortable environment in which to work and to do the things that are necessary for our children and the education system in the territory. Honorable Minister, uh, in hindsight, you have uh, at least uh, three and a half more uh, years in this uh, fourth okay. term. Uh, what would you like in conclusion? What would you like the... Uh, next three and a half years of your mm -hmm. uh, fourth term to look like? I just want to work with the government and the ministers just to address the issues with my community, the issues that are plaguing the people of my territory, my community, and the people of this territory. Because I believe that all 13 of us have a responsibility to work collaboratively <clears throat> in the interest of the country. So we're going through the budget exercise now. Uh, I know everybody's going to be clamoring for bunnies and to do things within their districts and within various aspects of the, of the territory. But we have to find a way to have a, um, equity in the process. If you're saying that we're going to give this X district $500, give all the districts $500 so that we have some equity and say, look, this is the money that you have available to do things within that community, in that territory, in the district. And you have to plan accordingly to get those things executed. We, all, we need a master plan on how we're going to fix the country moving forward. We cannot do it in a haphazard a health and skelter way, and that's how we've been operating for too long. It's time for us to manage in a more structured approach in how we address the issues that each community faces, but in fact, issues that all of us face as a territory. So I'm willing to work with the government on this. I'm going to continue to advocate and fight for the issues that affect the people that I represent in the Eastern Island community. And I'm going to be a loud advocate um, to get those things done for my people. Honorable Minister, thank you so much for your time. No, thank you, Ron. Ladies and gentlemen, we just heard from the Honorable Minister for the 8th Electoral District, the Honorable Marlon A. Penn. You've been watching, just for the record, the first 100 days in office. 284 Media, I'm Ron Grant.